and I am waiting to see if this is working, but apparently it says live on Facebook. So, well, good evening. We're going to say good evening because over here at station in Spain, it is now 9 11 p.m. And in this session, I want to welcome my certified practitioner and some of them who will be certified in a matter of days or just a few weeks because it's normal. The course from 2018 is only finishing next week. So I welcome tonight, in order of appearance that I see them on my screen, I welcome Julie Flynn from Melbourne, Australia, Susan Steinbiss from the USA, Becky Ferry from the UK, Jim Berry, who is American, but living in Germany, Esther, who lives in the Netherlands, and then at the bottom, you see Kara. At the moment, the video of Kara is not on yet because she is still driving. So we'll just wait another minute or five. She will be home and then she will put her video on too. Kara is just like Julie, also from Melbourne, from Australia. So today, tonight, uh, it's lunchtime in Los Angeles, but it's three in the afternoon EST time or eight in UK time. Today, I want to present you my uh, almost certified students or practitioners. And uh, one of them is a, a little bit special. And that's for the following. That's the first lady on the screen. That's Julie Flint. And why is she just a little bit more special? That is because she has done all the courses. She started with the equine course in 2017. And now in the past year, 2018, she has been doing the small animals course. So I will also start with her tonight or today. I will start with her, uh, ask her a few questions because she is standby at the moment. Okay, she runs an ambulance in Melbourne for pets. And so as soon as the phone will ring, she will have to leave us. So I would say right now, Julie, welcome to this uh, meeting with uh, the team of uh, photonic practitioners. Um, maybe I think maybe you could start with just introducing yourself. Who are you? From where are you? What's your background? What are you doing at the moment? Good morning. Well, good morning. It's 7 a.m. here. So my background, my background is 15 years of vet nursing. So passion is animals. Um, I started a 24-hour animal ambulance nine years ago. So we are on the road uh, helping animals that have been hit by cars, that have been injured, and most of them are in a lot of pain. I'm only a vet nurse, not a vet. My vehicles carry oxygen tubing. We re resuscitate animals on transport to save their lives. So to be able to um, help their pain and assist with their breathing, this is why I started the photonic therapy courses. Um, as a vet nurse, we can't have drugs on board and a lot of my patients are actually in pain. Photonic therapy using the torch in certain spots um, and following the standard points and emergency points for different ailments, I'm able to help their breathing and I'm able to take away their bleeding and stop their bleeding and help their pain. Since finishing the course, I've been able to confidently and see improvement in all my patients. And this is the reason I started and I continue every day to use it. I also run a rescue centre at home. Some of the ambulance patients um, have, are surrendered to me because of their behaviour or um, ongoing care, which could be very costly, and they would be facing euthanasia. So they've come to live with us at our property here. Um, so we have horses. I have four horses. I have six dogs. I have a cat and I have two lovely little chickens and I and I and look my my oldest horse she's 32 um she was um in her past a breeding mare she had a lot of pelvic issues when she first came and I've now after torching her she was one of my case studies she's now running around the paddock and you would think she's like a three-year-old apart from the fact that she's very gray 
but otherwise she lives a really happy, healthy life. And that is the reason I like it. Um, I have a little pony who is a founder pony, um, came to me um, with laminitic issues. And so he, I constantly, he's on a maintenance dose at the moment and he is doing really well. So it's amazing to see the changes in all my animals. They're all happy, healthy, even my cat. Now my cat is pretty special. My cat, I couldn't, I can't really pick her up. Now, when I first started torching her, I would have to wrap her in a towel just for that very first torch to go near her. And we started with Baywe to try and help her calm down. And then I would let her go. Now I get the torch out to torch myself and my cat comes to find me <laughs> and she headbutts me. She literally gets in the way of the torch wherever my torch is, she is it. And so she now enjoys a full photonic um, therapy session without any restraint. She purrs through the whole session now and she's amazing. Now, and behavior wise from there she was always now she's eight years of age she's always been a cat that you could pat when she wanted you to now she's a cat that hers and she's on our laps and allows us to pat and carry and pick her up at all times she's a very much a relaxed cat now as a whole just by standard points now um so for me photonic therapy has been a big part of assisting the animals and will continue to be so. So I, I will use this in my ambulance every day with my animals at home and friends and families, animals to take their pain away and to show them what they can do to help as well. Yeah, it's incredible. I remember so well in the beginning, that first picture that came that when you had to do your exercises on the cat and the cat was totally wrapped in and you had to go and look to do a point, but you had to wrap them in because otherwise she would scratch you open. Or the joke, yes. the, I remember also the joke that you once wrote uh, to me and said, Eva, you say I have to have one case study on, on birds, but I'm scared of birds. I don't like birds. I don't know birds. And what she do? What does she do? She goes and she rescues two chickens to be yep. able to practice at home on some chickens. So yeah, I remember those days. Um, it was quite uh, it was quite special. Now um, I do have a question which I have never asked you before. As you already did the equine course, why did you also do the small animals course? Because I mean, you were already a tech vet or a vet tech, sorry, a vet tech. So you didn't really, vet yeah, you didn't really need an extra course with the small animals. Why did you decide to do that? I. I believe actually following your course, I would learn specific um, ailments for the smaller animals. So I, yes, I know I can transpose the points that I learned in my equine course. And so any ailment, I can now go to my equine booklets, for instance, and I could transpose those to the goats, to the sheep, to whatever, because they're so well written. The books are very do well documented. So people can take those books no, and... <laughs> Sorry. But I'm saying now, um, with, the, with the small animal course, yes, I am a qualified vet nurse. I've gone as far as I can go in my education, vet nursing. Um, but I believe taking your small animal course assisted me so I can assist the patients better. Okay. Well, uh, I have one question left. That is, where can people find you? How can people find you? I've already told in the beginning so that you live... Uh, somewhere around Melbourne, Australia. Now, if somebody wants to contact you to come and help with their animals or to come and show how to use platonic therapy and so on, how can they find you? Where can they find you? Okay, so I actually live in Oakland's Junction, which is in Melbourne, near Melbourne Airport. So I will travel. Now, I have a um, Facebook page called Melbourne Pet Ambulance, and I will shortly be putting some information about photonic therapy on that page. I also have a web page, and it's www.melbournepetambulance.com. I'll certainly be adding um, a section to there about photonic therapy, equine, and small animals. 
so they'll be able to look there and ask questions and contact me through that. Yeah. Anyways, uh, later on when this live is finished, I will make sure that if you all give me your website or Facebook page where people can contact you, I will put that in the link under this live. Okay, so that everybody can just contact you directly. We will work something out that you also come with your web page and so on on my website so people can find you locally. But uh, I'll make sure that we do that also under this live. Okay, who wants to talk to me right now? Who's the next? Choose, who wants to talk to me? Okay, Esther, fine. Um, okay, so I'll first introduce Esther. Esther is somebody I've known for how many years? Seven years, six or seven or, well, six, six seven, seven or eight. Yes. Yep. She came here on the holiday at a friend's place uh, at Addis in Gijona. And she came with all her lovely border collies and Australian shepherds. I think you were you had three or four dogs with you at that moment. And there was a problem. I, I can't remember what problem it was. But anyways, I went over and I introduced her to the torch and I showed how to use it and to help the animal. And since then, she has been using the torch also for one of her dogs who has epilepsy. And she joined my course. So, but all the rest, I'm gonna let her talk to you. So Esther, she's from the Netherlands. Welcome, Esther. She, Esther started to do the small animal course in 2018, in, at the end of January, 2018. And she is finishing up now in, in the upcoming uh, days and weeks. And all the rest, she's gonna tell us. Go ahead, Esther. Well, as Eva told you, I'm from Holland and uh, she already did the equine course and I had the torch for six years already. Uh, I didn't use it enough. Uh, otherwise, I always, always seen that it worked out so well. And then she started the small animal course and I thought, oh, this is my chance. I got to get in and I got to get more, uh, more of it and all the knowledge uh, which I wanted to learn. And... Um, yeah, that, that was the most amazing thing uh, to do this year because uh, I already helped so many animals. My background is that I have uh, an epileptic dog with epileptic seizures and we helped her since then. And she is four years uh, free now from seizures. We helped her, my background is here, here back. Uh, I have a small shop in supplements and uh, fresh meat for dogs. We helped her with that already. Uh, this year, uh, we started with the photonic therapy and we lowered the dose with the medication, half of it. So that's amazing to do. Uh, oh, you have to, to know the, all the background, of course, of it. That's the most amazing thing to learn. You learn all about the anatomy of the, of the dogs and the cats and the birds and where all the meridians are and the points you, you can use. And of course, you uh, you challenge it on your own dogs and cats first, um, and then then you see the most amazing things happen. Yeah, and that's where it all started. And then you can help other people and other other dogs of people, of course. And then uh, you know, it's the nice thing about that that people are so happy. You make people happy because you're helping them and their animals. And I also work with my border collies on a farm and uh, we cheap and um, I started using it on the little lambs <laughs> which was just <laughs> born and I saved a lot of them yeah. because they sometimes they have a tough time that's that's so cool yeah and the farmers don't want to invest money from uh, to pay vets to come and take care of those little lambs because they're for them they are not valuable enough so that's why it's so great that, that you have the torch and that every time you go over there to train with your dogs and, and to work over there, that you can help them. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a question was, so you decided to do this course because you wanted to know more about it and be able to help your animals more. But since then, you've really yeah. got a bit crazy because... You haven't stopped there. Now you're doing uh, veterinary, natural veterinary courses. Uh, you have now, you were working part time. Now you've started also to have a shop with all things for animals. You make bracelets and, and so on for dogs. And I mean, you don't stop anymore. 
No, but because it's so nice to help people with their animals and I'm getting so much energy out of it. So it's the most nice thing you can do in yeah. this world to help other people. And you see that they're so happy and you see the dogs are getting better and better. And uh, yeah, I get a really warm feeling. So yeah. I can't stop. I have to go on. <laughs> That's great. And, and, and so what's going to happen now? So uh, until now, you haven't been allowed uh, to really work because you were a student and you were doing your case studies. Uh, but once yeah. that you have your certificate, what are you going to do then with your photonic therapy? I'm going to make it my profession. I, I was in, um, in Austria the last two weeks. I'm just getting back. So I got a little bit bored get, get everything out of the car and to sit here right now. But um, well, there was somebody, she asked, oh, please, can you help us with our dog? They got a Siberian Husky and uh, they have to cut the nails. Mm -hmm. Just a simple thing, but the dog was not easy. So, uh, and I already, I always get always uh, everything with me. So I got the nail ch uh, chipper, of how do you call it? And the comb and everything you need with, for your own dogs. Yeah. So I thought, of course I'm gonna help you, but when uh, I'm, I'm gonna help you, they were uh, in the apartment down da uh, below us. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Um, so I took the torch with me because I want to calm the dog first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I did the, the baby first and the calming points. And then the dog was ready. They, they want to hold the dog, but it wasn't even necessary. That was so cool. The people that are coming over here, they're Dutch people, they're coming over here in uh, April and they want to know all about it. And that's how it works. They, they saw it happen. They saw it in front of them, what's, what was going on. Yeah. That's just a simple thing I'm telling now, but it was yeah, so nice. I was just on a holiday there. So yep. then you can help someone. Yeah, but it, it's like, it's like Julie also said, it's People have to see it, or Julie with her cat in the beginning, cat didn't want it. But once you use it once or twice, suddenly those animals all realize what's going on. Oh, when my when she does that with me, I'm feeling better. I'm not in pain. I'm not stressed. I'm not relaxed. And that's the same with your, in, in, in many cases, people always say, but how can this work? And that's why I'm always so happy to just, I don't like to show photonic therapy on humans because of the placebo effect, but the animals don't have that. So if I have to show photonic therapy to anybody, I will always do that with animals because within minutes they relax, they go to sleep, they are calm and so on. So and it's the best thing you can do. Yeah. So uh, Esther, how can people find you? So uh, where do you live more or less? I live in the middle of Holland, so that's easy. Groningen, that's uh, not an easy name, but it's, close, <laughs> it's easy to find. It's close to what big city? Uh, it's between, um, it's more or less in the south, above Breda. It's between Breda and Amsterdam. Okay. Yeah. So, and where can people find you? Do you have a website or a Facebook page or where can they find you? I have a few Facebook pages. They can find me on uh, www.pureanimals.nl. Okay, yeah, from Netherlands. Yeah, and I got a few Facebook pages where they can find me. Okay. I put them later here, under here, so. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Okay, anything else you want to yeah. share with us? Oh, I got a lot of stories. Uh, which I could tell you, but the last one was, was also just a simple one, but people have to see it. Yeah. Uh, the, my last case studies of also Siberian Huskies, they're really not easy. Not yeah. easy dogs. Yeah. But, but and that, that wild cat there that was bleeding out of his oh, ear. The wild cat, yeah, that's a really nice story. We got a wild cat with a stray cat here uh, around the house. Yeah. And uh, we give him some food because he, he, he rather wants to live with us. He likes our dogs. He goes for walks and time. But once he came in, he, he was in front of my door and he got a really bleeding ear. And I thought, oh, I, so I, he came in if he, he wants to get help. That was really awesome. But I put him in and um, 
I give him some food to to uh, to uh, how do you call it trigger him, so yeah. I could torch him. Yeah. Well, and and uh, and he was not amused because he was growling all the time, all the time. But in 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 some way, he must have felt that it was so good because I just. Uh, put the torch on his ear for for uh, a half a minute or a minute because <laughs> I want to I want to stop the bleeding. Then I did the stop bleeding points, and I I I I uh, get the, I did the standard points. How I did it, I don't know. But I stopped I I put feed <laughs> stop feeding keep quit feeding him, and then I put him outside, and I did it every day. I tried it to do a few days, and within ten days, really, really in ten days. You didn't see anything, and there was hair on his ear. Yeah, you, you never would see if there was anything happened. <laughs> so that's the power. That's the power of photonic therapy, and that's why we yeah. like it. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm just so happy that I I did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did the course. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I see now that you have my torches behind you. So um, Esther will be my emergency point in the Netherlands where I uh, uh, have sent some torches in case that people nearby have an emergency, a horse with colic uh, or an animal that needs an operation the next day so that they can go directly for Netherlands. It will then be Esther, where people can directly go to go and get a torch. And uh, with my other students, I will talk about that to see if they want to become such a point too, to have always a few uh, torches in stock just for emergency cases, not in general, but for emergency cases. Okay, let me go backwards. Because I know not everybody likes to be in the big screen in the front. So, um, who wants to go next? Okay, Susan, in the big screen or the small screen? Small. <laughs> I'll leave, them. I'll leave it the way it is. So, <laughs> Let me first introduce to you Susan Steinbis. She is also a very special lady because she is my very first student ever. Okay, ever. Not only for my certificate courses, but for any course that I have given in the last 10 years. She is my very first student who does an equine course without having a horse. <laughs> Okay, so really, when she enrolled for the equine course, she said, I don't have a horse. I said, what? I said, why do you want to do this course if you don't have a horse? I like horses and I like being with horses and I like to help horses. So she asked me if she could do this course without having a horse. I said, yeah, no problem. If you, during the week, practice at home, Okay, and I saw her practice. She had a she had a, 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 a little statue of an animal of a horse, if I remember well. And I think she also worked with a picture and she was practicing that. And then during the weekend, she would go to a stable and do the real practice live with that animal. And she, in the end, was the first to end uh, the course with her case studies. Look, you don't have to have the animals to do the course. You just have to have the passion and, and, and go in the weekends, then make time free to go in the weekends and do that work. So student, uh, so student Susan is from the USA and she is going to tell a bit more about herself, about uh, her career, about which industry she was working before uh, starting this course and uh, why she's here today. Go ahead, Susan. Sure, absolutely. So uh, unlike everyone else, my background is not oriented in animals, but I've always loved animals. I have been a nurse and a nurse practitioner for, we'll just say 30 plus years. It's been a, a really long time and I've always had a passion for animals. Um, I was a typical little child who said, I want a horse, I want a horse, I want a pony and went through my whole life always wanting one and, and never had one. I've always had dogs, um, but it, it's okay because I've always found a way to get around them and be around them. And as things have changed in life, I kind of have the desire to help things that appreciate the help. And I don't mean it in, in a negative sort of way, but animals I feel like don't have a voice of their own. And I've done volunteer work working with special needs children at an equine center. And at that equine center, we have older animals. And of course you need an animal that they consider to be bomb proof that can tolerate children on their back, bouncing along, pulling on the reins. And these animals often have a lot of pain. 
Um, they, they are uncomfortable a lot just because of their age. And I did a little bit of equine massage because I felt like if I could at least go out and relieve some of the tension in their poles and in their neck, that that would help them have a better quality of life. And I did the Animal Wellness Summit. I guess in 2017, and Ava, that's where I first saw you present, and I was very intrigued by the concept of photonic therapy, and I think thinking about my medical background, just trying to figure out how everything worked and how something like that could actually help the animals that, that I spent time working with and, and volunteering around, and I, I looked up the class, we chatted, and of course, like you said, I didn't have horses, couldn't put one in my backyard, but because I was working with a center, I had the ability to say, to talk to the barn manager and say, can I come out and can I work with the horses? And of course they were ecstatic because to have someone come volunteer at a center that doesn't have money and relies on donations and funds at any way that they could keep the horses health, healthy helps decrease their out of pocket expense. Yeah. So like you said, I would go over there, do what I needed to do. Um, but at home, I actually had an equine model and I built the, the muscles of the horse, 80% of the muscles of the horse with clay. I did a class in Denver, Colorado, and I brought that model home with me. It was very difficult to get home, but I, I did manage to get it home. And just because it, it helped me still look at the horse and kind of think about the layering of the muscles. And it was an intense six day course. Unfortunately, a lot of that doesn't stick in your brain, but I at least have the pictures to help me remember how the muscles lie on, the, on top of each other and how one may influence the other. And um, I started playing around with the photonic therapy. I, when we came over to Spain for the class, I still remember working on that one little black pony who had all the bug bites on her belly. We put the torch there, just a torch locally. And I have never seen a horse do this, but she started weaving back and forth. It was like she was getting so much relief just from the torch being on the spot. And we just kept moving. And, she, and as long as the torch was there, she weaved back and forth. And that to me was amazing. It was seeing immediate response to something that was done. And it, it just made my heart so happy because I really felt like I could help animals. And that's truly what I wanna do. Um, I've since gone out to, I still volunteer out of the barn. And that's, I just came from there this morning, freezing out there in the cold. And it's fun because I'll walk out to one pasture and six of the geldings will run up to me and they'll be, they'll be ready. So I have to decide who gets treatment first. Um, <laughs> Some of them are more like you come get me and I'll stand right here and we'll, we'll do what we need to do. Um, but it's fun to watch them. I've been told, I don't know what you've done with this horse, but she had such a hard time cantering and she was not stiff and she picked up the canter for the first time and I couldn't tell you how long. So it just, it, I do feel like people are getting the benefit as well as the horses because you know, the ride for them is better. They're not pulling so much on the horse. They're not kicking the horse and maybe they're building a better relationship as well. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. And also it also helps the humans because they see their animal is no longer in pain. Yes, and for me, it's education too because if the horse has now become girthy or he's nibbling at them, it's more so let's find out what's wrong with them rather yeah. than assume that they just have an attitude today because that's usually not the case. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and uh, what you're going to do from now? So you will be certified in, in, in a few days. What happens then? What you're going to do with this? That I have to figure out now because I don't know how everything works in the U S mm -hmm. So now I have to figure all that out. I definitely want to, to continue working with the horses and I want to build all of that. I just have to figure out how to make that happen because I am still working as a nurse. Okay. Yeah. Not much, but still working some there and, and ultimately working with the animals is what I do want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that goes for everybody uh, is the following. If you are still doing uh, your regular job, okay, you're doing your regular career, um, you have to look in your own country if you can start to work part time at your own uh, for yourself. Um, once you have your certificate, you can get an insurance with the IICT, the International Institute for Complementary Therapists, and get liability insurance also in the States. Okay, so that's not a problem. What uh, for you, what you just have to figure out is how many hours do I have time at this moment because I'm still doing my other job? How many hours do I have? Can I start uh, doing that now and see what, what, what's the best for you? Uh, look at it with an accountant 
because some of you are already working with animals, so it's just a compliment on top of it. But for others, you're not really in that business, so you have to start something new. But uh, I'm sure that uh, we will be talking about that because in a few months, once you will all be established and started to do this professionally, I will be uh, presenting you one at a time every two weeks, have a long chat so people get to know you even better. Uh, but that will be in a few months once you all started doing this professionally. Okay? Okay, Susan, where can people find you if they want to talk to you, if they want your help? If they have an animal in need, where do you live more or less? In, in which big city are you the closest? So I, at, down below Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm okay. about 20 miles down below Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. And how can people contact you? Probably my personal email. And did you say you were going to post something after this? And I could just give you my personal email. And then they could put photonic therapy or something like that in the message line. Okay, fine. I will do that. Great. So anything else to share with us? I, don't think so. I, want to, I want you to show us what you have behind you. You are the only student who has that. Oh. <laughs> so look, show me what you have there. Let's look, see. There we go. Susan even has the skeleton of the horse <laughs> and she has the skeleton of a dog. Um, the dog is... I can pick him up. Here's my puppy. So she has a skeleton of the dog and she has a skeleton of the horse. I have been looking for that for years. And she just found it. Where was it again? Um, uh, Home Depot. So one of our home improvement stores. Of course, we don't have that in Spain. <laughs> I will keep my eyes peeled for you this year. I will try and get you one. Okay, that's great. Okay. Who wants to go now, Becky or Jim? Okay, Becky, uh, unmute yourself. So I will talk about you too, because every single one of my students is special. If you didn't know that yet, I will tell to you that now. So Becky, she is from the UK and um, she is my only, well, how must I say that? She, she, she will talk about that herself, but she has a, um, how do you call the right word again? Um, how do you call it again? What you have at home? Uh, the dogs? You have a? I, I, I have a home boarding, dog, dog boarding facility. So they, they board, but it's not kennels. They stay in the home. They're in her home. And why is she so special? Because she is a woman that just like Esther with the sheep, she just doesn't give up. Eva, I found this little sheep. They wanna, they don't wanna give it uh, medi medication. What can I do? And she would take those sheep into her house. Okay? She went further. She says, "You don't wanna help it? Let me get that little baby with me." And she took them in her house to go and help this um, this little sheep. And it wasn't one. I don't know how many times you have talked to me about. Oh, Eva, this one has this, and this one has that. What can I do? Okay, she may have lost one, but she also saved others because you do have to remember that sometimes you arrive too late and it's just too late to be able to save them. But uh, no, she doesn't give up. I mean, I've seen pictures of the weather that it's raining and there's mud and there is, I mean, it's almost freezing there, but she's still, no, no, gonna get that little sheep, gonna take it out, gonna bring it home and gonna take care of it. Becky, please introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. Tell us where you are with your kennel. Not, not a kennel, it's a boarding. And they are in your house. Um, give us some information of your background, what your career is, and so on. Okay. Hi. I'm in the northeast UK, so uh, quite close to a city called Durham. So quite close to the coast. Um, about We're about 100 miles south of Edinburgh, so quite close to the border. Yeah. Um, I left my office job in 2016 and set up a pet and equestrian and livestock business. So okay. we do um, boarding for dogs uh, in the home. We look after small animals when people go on holidays. So I've had a parrot and rabbits and guinea pigs to stay. Um, and for the, the equestrian services, 
Um, I do a little bit of training, but I also, we have a swim, an equine swimming pool, which I lease. And um, that's, I've had that for about 18 months now. Um, and I do sort of holiday care. So if people go away, I'll go and check their horses and things like that. Um, and I have, at the moment, four horses of my own. Um, two, two big ones and two little ones, basically. Um, and one dog of my own. And um, I've got four sheep, all which were rescued. Um, <laughs> I, like you said, the, the the farmer said that they weren't worth saving, so I I said, well, I'll take them home then, and we'll give it a go. Um, so they're the four that have survived out of a, quite a few. Um, so yeah, I've been quite pleased, and um, that was what I used the torch for that, along with um a few different different supplements that were sort of not veterinary to see if they they would work. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. The Originally, I came across uh, photonic torches um, when my mare was very poorly and we didn't know what was wrong with her. Yeah. So I, I saw something online and I thought it was worth getting one. Um, and I think I saved her life because I think she was colicking, but it was kind of long drawn out. Yeah. Um, and then I thought, oh, this, you know, this does work. And that was just looking at a picture and trying to find the, the, the places on her body. And I must, I must have got some of them right anyway. Um, so I thought, oh, and I've always been interested in sort of alternative therapy and, you know, the history of medicine and, and, and things. And my academic degree was um, animal science. And so I kind of got a bit of the animal um, knowledge from there. And I've always had animals. So then I saw, I think it was Susan and said she saw you on the wellness summit so I thought it would be worth finding out a bit more and that's how I found you found this this course originally um and decided to do the equine course um and I've used it for, for a few different things like I said the sheep and the, the horses um I've used it for a few wounds where you can really see how it works quickly and I think that's a good thing to show people because, you know, like a few people have said, you stop the bleeding and within a couple of days, the wound is kind of looks a week old. And I've also used it on, on my, myself, which is I got a dog bite and within sort of two days, it looks like it was a week old. Um, so that's, that's a good, good, good thing to show people those pictures. Um, and what my sort of plans for the development of what I do now is um, I'm developing a, I suppose it'll be a, like a rehab facility focusing on um, the, the rehabbing um, hoof and lower leg problems predominantly for the horse because um, that fits nicely with the swimming pool. And I want to feed the photonic therapy into that as well. So it, it's kind of a all round helping the animals. Um, but that that's kind of my the part of the animal I'm most interested in, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but but like like I think Susan mentioned and well, a few people have mentioned that after a few torching sessions, people comment how free the animal feels or how much more relaxed they are. And I've seen that with a few of my case studies with some really old ponies. And I actually got told to stop torching one. 29 year old mare because the disabled riders who were riding her couldn't stop her anymore and um, <laughs> so that was a really nice bit of feedback because they've kind of seen and recognized the difference but when I asked to go and torch her and and sort of learn with with th that mare they were a bit like well you, well you can but we don't really know why or what it's going to do yeah. um so I think that will be that's how I want to use it going going forward in the future is, 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 you know, not just for that, but I think that's where I'm going to use it within my, my sort of path, if you like. Yeah, that sounds great. So um, where can people find you? I, um, I know you have a web page. I, I have a web page and a Facebook page. And um, okay. my business is just called Black Dog Barn. Um, so the website is blackdogbarn.co.uk and it's 
comes up like that on Facebook as well. Okay, oh, we'll all have a look there because I didn't see the Facebook page yet. Let me yeah, go it, and uh, research that. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's there, but it's just all one word, Black Dog Barn, it should, should find it. And from where comes the name, Black Dog, Black Dog Barn? Um, we had a, a dog, um, he was a black German Shepherd, um, and in the 2010, he became quite poorly, and the vet didn't know what it was. And by the time we found a specialist vet, it was too late. He had um, he had leukemia, yeah. which apparently is a very common problem in shepherds. Yeah. Um, so it, it's kind of a tribute to him, really, because he wasn't very old. And we thought, you know, if we ever get to move house and, you know, do my animal business, um, that's what I'm going to call it. So that's <laughs> purely, it's just a memory. Yeah. Well, that's, anyways, it's very, really nice of you doing that. Oh my God, there's a cat trying to get the, the camera off Julie. Hello, cat. Okay, Becky, anything else you want to mm -hmm. share with us? And um, the, the only other thing I'll say is I'll, I will continue to take sheep um, from the <laughs> farmer when he wants to dispose of them. And yeah. um, I think my little flock might grow. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. I think uh, you have to be careful that you're not going to become a sheep farm. <laughs> no. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, Jim. Well, Jim. Mr. Jim Berry from the USA, living in Germany, is, well, yeah, he's special too, because first of all, he is my one and only man who has ever done my courses. So Jim, yeah, what can I tell about you? You are Monsieur Extraordinaire. I can see, we can see, by the way, we can see behind you, your, how do you call it? Your statues, because you have a master degree well, I'm just going to let you explain it all. So, um, Jim, uh, tell us more about yourself. Tell us more about your past. Tell us more about your career. Tell us more why you are in this group with all these ladies. Well, I come from Minnesota, underneath the Canadian border. And I got in the military, moved to Germany, and then I met my wife, and then we went back to the States for eight years, and then we decided to come back to Germany because uh, Minnesota, Siberia is colder, but Minnesota in the average is the coldest place on earth. And with eight months out of the year being almost mo minus 40 degrees, we decided to move back to Germany. Uh, <laughs> Since I was in the military, I also did martial arts. It was my dream. So when we moved back to, to Germany, I asked my wife what she wanted to do, and she wanted to have a horse. So we started off with a horse, and we didn't have no idea, so we started Pirelli. And we learned that our horse is category is a, normally they have introvert, extrovert, where they have a lot of energy. They either move or they don't move. And then they have confidence or they're afraid. Well, this horse, you have to have your strategy changed all the time because she switches all the way around. And uh, that caused a lot of injuries. And, and uh, we had a friend who had a, a torch and had really good results. We decided that we always wanted to have one when we got enough money that we would, would do that. And then when we started researching, we found you and you were so nice and... Uh, you were always concerned and trying to help and they were always there. And yeah. And then I uh, decided that I would start a little bit more. And it just happened two weeks after we got the torch that my horse fell down and got injured. And uh, I didn't know really what to do with the light. And uh, well, I called you and we, we, you helped me and tried to get me to do all the stuff. And, and, uh, it helped my horse and they were really, really happy with it. And I could see the pain was going away and the horse was healing faster and everything, but I still didn't know enough about it. So then I decided to take the course from that. But for me, I'm a fifth degree master in, in Taekwondo, but I'm over the years I've done, I've started up almost 18 different martial arts that I'm, that I'm doing. So 
I've always learned the pain side of it, but it's nice to have the healing side. So when you get hit or injured that you can take away that pain. So, yeah, so I've had really good results so far. I've had a dog that couldn't stand up. Uh, they put cortisone in the, the back still a day later, didn't get up. I did the points and that day it whined, but it got up. And the next day I got out six times and within a week was down swimming in the pond. So that was a good result. And then I had another dog that over two years time with four different vets that uh, they changed the food, they did medication, everything. And it kept biting itself. It was itching and biting and biting and, and they couldn't, couldn't help it. But after four weeks of doing the torch with it, doing standard points and itchy points and it, the dog stopped biting the hair started growing back within six weeks it was it was good and uh yeah and then with this last year i had four colic horses that the vet took so long to get there but my last horse here a week and a half ago the first one of the year it took only three minutes and it and took probably 10 feet of walking and it uh, relieved itself and then we knew that everything was going to be okay so I've had birds and dogs and cats and had cats that couldn't be touched just, just like Julie. And after a little bit of time, they just, they come, they want to be by that torch and they know that they can get, get fixed by it. So, yeah. And then uh, my mother-in-law, she, uh, she didn't believe in it. And she was like, well, I'll try it. But we were like, you don't need to believe just just watch the results and then after a few times and she could see that it was getting better she had a hand that had that it kept closing on her and she couldn't open she had to use her other hand to open it up but we did that and uh it uh ended up that it was getting less instead of being three times a day it was maybe one time a day and then one time a week and then that turned out real good and, and then for uh here in Germany, I was a dog handler for 17 years. And when we were training, the dog would bite and shake. And it ended up messing up my shoulder for a while. I could only lift my arm about that high. But after doing the torch for three months, now I can rotate it all the way normal again. Yeah. So I, I know that it works. Yeah. So and from now, because uh, I'm missing the end of your story, which are you doing today? Well, I'm, uh, I just got a different job. I've been there about eight, nine months now. I'm working with 90 Icelander ho horses. So I'm starting to get into my, my uh, feeling really good about things. I, uh, I taught the horses within four days using Pirelli that uh, all I have to do is whistle and they, they come. I don't have to chase them through the high wet grass or the mud and uh, my boss, she went out there with one of the st students and she wanted to get one horse. She made a mistake. She whistled and all the whole herd come. So I'm getting my chance to be with horses and fix horses. And, um, I work usually until two o'clock in the afternoon. So that means I've got all the rest of the, the evening and days or weekends and stuff that I can uh, get out there and help other animals or do my martial arts. So I've got really good life now as far as that goes right now. And you have your own horses too. Yeah. And my own horses, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, now that you're finishing up and that you will be certified, what, what are your plans? Well, to start with, uh, I've got, got the time now that I can get out there and help horses. I've had dressage horses. I have jumping horses. I have Western horses with their stop slides that I've, I've had injuries with. So the horse... Right now, the horses are what's really important to me, but anytime I find an animal that, that I can help, now that I can transpose everything and, and understand it, how everything works, it, it's really good that way. If people want to get a hold of me, my uh, website is jsberry.net, and my web uh, my email is jsberry at online.de. So you can get a hold of me there, and I'll send you a link for, for the rest of it. Yeah. That's great. We'll uh, we'll post that under the video, well under the webinar here. Okay. So, Thank you. Excuse me. Thank you for your information and knowledge. Oh, it's my pleasure. I mean, we are building out a team. The 
It's not, uh, you are all now finishing and most of you, you don't know the other. I mean, Becky certainly never saw Jim or saw Esther because they are from other groups. I have people here from, from two years and from two different courses. But the objective is, is that we will stay together as a team in one group on Facebook where we can still help each other in future, where we can still ask questions one to the other or uh, giving tips one on the other. So uh, I'm getting uh, a message. Let me, let me just have a look if it is about... Uh, okay, she, some, apparently something has happened and, uh, with a horse and they need the calming points. So uh, I, I will look at that in a minute. Okay, let's have a look. Where is Kara? Kara was just there. One second, she's probably trying to fix one thing with that. Okay, so then Kara, we are waiting for you, but meanwhile, we can still chat around. So what could we be talking? Oh, there she is. Hello, lady. So let me start. Kara is also from Australia and she's also from around Melbourne. She's about an hour away from Julie. And she is also a very special student. She is very intuitive. And she was my student who would, how must I say that? She was the student I was afraid of that she wasn't practicing enough because I didn't hear her enough. I didn't see her enough. I said, mm, I don't like that silence. It's not normal. But the result was only that she kept on exercising and exercising and exercising and exercising. And when she just had to do it, she did it perfectly. So she is a lady with very long nails. I still don't get it how she does that with horses, but she has the gift of combining the two, combining the intuition, combining, she, she when she was here, uh, when were you here? I think it was in May. So somebody was practicing on the horse and she would be standing five meters behind. And then you would see, I have that on a few of the pictures that I put on the Facebook. Then you would see her being doing, and, and there she has doing to that, and there she's doing to that. She was doing the whole story for herself from a distance. Just, uh, I don't know if she even influenced that other student who was doing it really good because it was as if intuition was being transpassed just as the answers. But I'm going to leave it at that. And I'm going to uh, ask Kara, Kara, please introduce yourself. Let us know uh, what your passions are, where you are located, uh, why you did the course, for example. Um, and if you loved it or, or not, <laughs> no, that was a joke. Um, tell us a, a nice story because I know you have plenty of stories. So, alrighty. Well, I'm Zikara from Australia. I live about 45 minutes southeast of Melbourne. Uh, I actually came across photonic therapy back in 2000, in, late 2010, and it was actually one of the girls I was working with at a a salary store um, and she sprained her ankle quite badly and she knew of the photonic therapy and she explained it to me and I had the conceptual idea of what this all was there's a red light and you do acupuncture points or um, local areas and things like that and I thought it sounds really interesting but I need to do it on me so for all the things besides diet things but if I have done to my horses I like to do on myself first so I know what the experience is like um what it feels like the sensations what you know changes in your body um yeah so not long after that I had a, a session done because I have a bit of a um iffy shoulder and just the changes in that after one session so I thought yeah this is this is really something I want to know how to do and it was then when I uh, discovered I thought no this is actually what I really want to do um, doing life and then as you said with the intuition um, animal communication is my other big passion so that's um, the two things that I want to combine together um, yeah and so not long after that I got my first torch um, I have three now but that was my big silver one um, and the first uh, horse that I was working with was my own horse because um, she was lame and I had the physio out and it uh, 
like you actually had a question the other day about a, a lameness and you know you can't do x-rays and things like that um and she used it she had a cracked uh wing of her pelvis so that was one of the first things um that i did and even after the physio returned in she, um eight to ten weeks she couldn't believe the you know how well it healed she said you wouldn't even know this horse has done anything to herself so that was my first one and i worked on uh my other horses since i've done um the you know emergency like the colic uh, another well sort of emergency i got to do um a mare in foal the mare had 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 the foal but there's this weeny little gap in the bottom of the fence that somehow the foal had um got underneath and the poor mare was beside herself and they got the foal back like she never lost sight of it but she got the foal back but this mare was just trotting and trotting and trotting so the foal had not been able to drink um she just couldn't even stand because she her, her mother wouldn't stand still and the owner was all just as it's right she's calm so i went and got the mare and i just held her i was like it's all right and talk, and i did all the calming points for her and within i think by the third point she just let out this huge sigh and she stood and then the bubby came up around me I was able to drink and you know so i continued her calming points and yeah and then the bubble was able to drink and just within those you know five ten minutes um that i worked on she then was calm and literally from that moment on she was you know the, the foal was able to to drink the mare was calm yeah so something like that um yeah obviously quite special to be able to help with and i've had a few horses now that um have been lame and um they've all had the vet to them and they've uh like a, an undiagnosed um, or inconclusive result as to what the the cause of the lameness was so to be able to get those horses you know back up and um you know moving and have the lameness gone and you know when it when an owner says to you you've given me my horse back like you know, it's very it's very humbling um yeah, there's just, or actually one I did the other, she said to me, um, yeah, she's like, he loves you. She's like, he doesn't even be smoochy with me. And it's just, he's nearly 18 hands and he'll just have a little, little um, excuse me, so, and uh, yeah, and even my, yeah, my own horses and my young horse, um, he was one of my case studies. Um, and it was only because even when Eva said the video and saw my assessment sheet, she said, whoa, what's wrong with that horse? And I said, I know, and that's my horse. And I was horrified, but he had a change. We'd had a quite change in the grass and it had affected him, but through his whole body. Um, and with the assessment, I was able to uh, deduce what the problem was and then work on him. And now he's, he's right as rain again. So yeah, to be able to be, I guess, mum and be able to help your animals and you know get them better is is a yeah it's a pretty neat thing to be able to do yeah i love to hear these stories i mean they're heartwarming and they change your life you change the animal's life and you change the owner's life because so many animals are still today put to sleep because the vets don't know what's going on or the vet thinks you can't save them just like with arthritis i mean all of you certainly have had a, a case study where you were doing an animal with arthritis there were traditional western medicine will say no you have to take this medication that medication will then have side effects on the stomach will give stomach ulcers and so on and so on nowadays arthritis is no reason anymore to put an animal to sleep be it a dog or be it a horse because thanks to photonic therapy, you can deal with the problem. You know what you have to do. You know which points you have to stimulate uh, to get the blood flow, go back in the, in the body to reduce the inflammation and so on. So for me, this is why this is my passion. This is why when, when I learned about it so many years ago, I knew that we had to find a way to let the world know that don't give up yet because there is still something in this world that works and you are all proof of that you all had confidence in me to follow this course to do the work to learn about it because for those who are looking right now i've had more students than just these people 
but these people went to the end, did the case studies, uh, followed my guidelines. If I have to say this is not good enough, you have to repeat it, you have to repeat it. It's as simple as that because those who end this course will be able to do an assessment correctly on the animal and will be able to help you, anybody who is watching now, they will be able to help you and tell you what's going on with the animal and then give also a solution. I do say always is that photonic therapy is to be used post-diagnostically by a vet, but often uh, I always use the same example is that uh, when a, a horse is lame, often they're going to say, yeah, well, it's probably a hoof ulcer. Uh, let the farrier come and let him find the hoof ulcer. No, you all, my certified, my future certified practitioners, you all know now the assessment how to find out if the problem is in the hip, in the stifle or in the lower leg. That is information that nobody can take away from you. And that information will let you bring solutions to animals that other people have given up. Becky has had those sheep. Uh, Esther has had those sheep or Esther has those uh, wild uh, cats and so on that nobody else will care for. You all bring solutions, just like with Julie and, and her ambulance. Vets, I've got messages from Julie where the vets, where she had to transport animals from one vet clinic to a specialized clinic where the vet, the first vet is going to say that animal is never going to make the trip to the other clinic. Well, Julie used photonic therapy and Julie used her other tricks and those animals did arrive still alive. And one of them also did make it at the end. Okay. So that's the advantage that you have right now. And that's also why I am proud that I have all of you here because you have passion. And it's only with passion that you make the end. The, the passion and, and all the experience that you've done, the experience that you've seen how this works and how good it works, that it warms your heart and that it warms the heart of the, of the owners. So, uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm really happy with all of you. Um, Kara, where can people find you? Uh, at the moment, um, just on my Facebook page or through Messenger, so just Kara Lucas, but uh, all my, my business name and logos and everything are, are on their way, on their yeah. way shape shortly. We will yeah. be talking about that uh, in two weeks in our course on the marketing after you all are graduated. And, 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 uh, but I'll put it already here and in the future, even in the future, we can just change that when you have everything ready for your professional page. And we'll take it further then. Okay, anything else? Uh, no, but like um, some of the other students and what you're saying is, you know, when you, it's a such a sweet thing and it's funny because I found, you know, between owners, um, you know, just quite different reactions or and whatnot. But, you know, some will say, oh, you know, when you, you arrive at the property and the horse comes and they're oh, you think they think you're going to feed it, except you've never fed the horse. So when they come for their treatments and they're waiting at their gates or, you know, you do a couple at the one, one property and there's a certain order that they like to go in. And yeah, it, it's so sweet when they, they're there waiting for you just, you know, cause you help them feel good. It's, it's yeah. really nice. And it has nothing to do with little biscuits or with food or whatever. It's just, they have found out what a session of photonic therapy does to them. And so horses who in the beginning, who don't know you or who don't want to be with their owner, they just run away. Well, once they've had a session or two, they just come to you because they want to be the next one. They want to have a new session. And that's, for me, it's completely normal. I'm used to that. And I'm happy to see that you are all seeing that now too. That's great. Yeah. Okay, let me put the grit, the gallery back. Who wants to say something more? Who has something more to share? either with your fellow students or certificate practitioners or share with me whatever you want to share with me. Sadly, I cannot see, for one or the other reason, I cannot see any messages that would have come in on Facebook, but uh, I can always answer them later on. That's no problem. Right now, I am here with you ladies and Jim. So please share whatever you want to share with the public. Um, they are here for you. They want to get to know you. 
Anybody? Ladies first. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Esther? Well, I want to say something. I, I bought, the, I have the, I have the, the big, uh, the big uh, torch <laughs> from, I bought it six or seven years ago. Yeah, that's this one. Yes, 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 that one. And look, um, look, look the difference. Yeah, the difference. I always, and, and people should know, you always should have the little one uh, with you because I had uh, this summer uh, walking with the dogs and the water was really low in the river and you have all the shells, so they cut their feet sometimes and put it right on and um, you do the stop bleeding points and and then there is no problem anymore, almost, and it heals so fast. But what I want to say, I, I was really, uh, I was really glad you did the, the small animal course this year because then I could learn so much more, and um, I was really confident about it because uh, uh, at the first time you have all the theory and and then you start using it and using it, and for me it was easy because I had all the I had all the sheep about six hundred or something with all the lambs. <laughs> So I could I could use it and use it and you see them. There are some lambs when I'm in the neighborhood. They are are yell at me already because they see me and they are happy. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, what I, I want to say it was uh, the summer we had a lake lamb and it does. I was on vacation and I was back and the farmer said to me, "Oh now, I think what is with the lamb? He was alone and there were standing lambs behind uh, next to him and he was alone in the in the cage." I said, what is, what is with that one? Oh, he said, that's a suicide lamb. He don't want to drink and uh, I don't know what to do about it. So I think, uh, should I test it before? But, but I, I start torching him and uh, I make a whole bottle of milk and I feed him and he drink all the bottle. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I was away for two days. I said, how is, how is it with the lamb? He said, ah, you don't, he doesn't want to drink. So I think, oh, I'm going to do it again. And I did it again, whole bottle again. And from that day, he, he was just drinking, and now it's a big one. Yeah. So a nice thing. But I'm so happy because I use it all the time, and so easily also. When you, now you know what to do, and you know where you ha you should be, and you know what points to use, and then then it's so easy to use. Yeah, absolutely. Just when I was in Austria, that, that they say, "Oh, please, can you help us? Because we have to cut the nails from the dog, and we never do it, and he's not easy, and I think he's gonna bite." We even got the how do you say it in English, Malcolm? They, um, they, the muscle. The muscle. They already talked about it. Uh, if it's necessary, we got a muscle. And uh, I think, well, okay, well, I first uh, should uh, use the torch and then we'll see what we're doing. And the dog was yeah. just easy. I don't think they even have to do hold him or something. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, so, I'm just so happy with it. Yeah. Me and, too. you know, we, we did so many nice things already uh, with other dogs. And, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anybody else? Before we log off, who wants to say something more? Go for it, Jim. I want to thank Julie and Carl. The uh, Julie, being that she was in Australia when we ever got the course, she was already just waking up, so it made me push to get all my stuff done so that uh, I didn't have to worry about time limits and stuff like that. A little bit of competition there. Thank you very much, Julie. And Cara, I, I want to thank you for some of your intuition, some of the stuff I'm able to start seeing in the horses that I couldn't see before. Because Cara's got, uh, one of her abilities is when she's feeling the points, she can, she's got something that she can see where she's exactly on the point so that it works better. And I've been trying to get that work to work for me too. But I can see that, see that they're communicating with me a little bit more different now when, when I'm going through to do the points. So I want to thank you for that. That's great. Anybody else? No? Well, that will be then for tonight. I will end the meeting right now. Uh, but uh, I repeat, in a few months, once you will all be starting your private practice, let's call it this way, I will do some podcasts with you, just one at a time. 
where we can go deeper and you can present yourself uh, more uh, so people get to know you better. Okay? Thank you, all of you, to be here tonight. Well, for me tonight, for Julie and Kara, it's still early morning. For Susan, it's early afternoon. So you see, we have students from everywhere and that's what's, what it makes it beautiful. It's my worldwide team, I call it, okay? That's it for tonight, for everybody who has been watching or if you are going to be watching uh, pretty soon, thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions for them or for me, just send them to us. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you.